Hey there! In this video, we are going to talk about Gaussian processes, which is a super powerful concept that I hope will change the way you think about modeling uncertainty. Let's start with a big idea, which is that Gaussian processes don't just give us a single function to fit our data, and instead, they give us an entire distribution of possible functions. This is incredibly useful when we are dealing with uncertainty or limited data. So what exactly is a Gaussian process? Well, it's basically a way to define a probability distribution, not over individual points, but over entire functions. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here we have several random functions, all drawn from the same Gaussian process. Notice how they share certain profiles, where they are all similar in smooth and have similar scales of variation. That's because they all come from the same multivariate Gaussian distribution just like rolling a bunch of correlated dices together. Now, before we get into specific examples, let's talk about how we define a Gaussian process mathematically. A Gaussian process is a collection of random variables where any finite subset follows a multivariate Gaussian distribution. That's a mouthful, but it's actually quite intuitive. We write this as f of x is distributed according to a gp of m of x and k of x x prime. Here, m of x is the mean function, which gives us the expected value of f at any point x, and k of x x prime is the covariance function or kernel, which tells us how points relate to each other. Now, let's visualize what this means. Imagine we have just these five points along our x axis. In a Gaussian process, we are essentially saying that the function values of these points follow a multivariate Gaussian distribution. We can write this as a vector of f of x1 through f of x5 is distributed according to a multivariate normal distribution, with a mean vector and a covariance matrix. This covariance matrix is constructed by evaluating our kernel function between every pair of points. Here is what such a matrix might look like. Notice how points closer together have higher covariance, shown by brighter blue colors. When we sample from this multivariate Gaussian distribution, we get a set of function values at our chosen points, and we can connect these points to get a function. And when we use more points and interpolate smoothly, we get a continuous function like this. Every time we sample, we get a different function, but all from the same distribution. This is the magic of Gaussian processes. They give us entire functions as samples. Now, let's talk about the prior distribution, which is a core concept in Gaussian processes. So, before we absorb any data, we start with what we call a prior. For simplicity, we usually set our means function to zero. That's this red line here. But what's really cool is that we also get this blue uncertain band showing us plus or minus 2 sigma around our prediction, which gives us a 95 confidence region for where our functions might be. Now, let me show you some examples from this prior distribution. See how they all wiggle around with those blue bands? That's simply how a function distribution looks like. When we actually observe some data points, things get really interesting. Watch what happens when I add this first red data point our distribution immediately changes to accommodate this new information. This updated distribution is called a posterior. Look at how the green line, our mean prediction, now passes right through our observation, and the uncertainty bands shrink dramatically around that point. As I add more observations, one by one, our posterior keeps updating. The uncertainty is smallest near our data points, and grows larger as we move away. This perfectly captures our intuition that we are more confident about areas we have observed and less confident about areas we haven't. Now, let's talk about kernel functions and how they relate to the Gaussian processes. Basically, the kernel determines what kinds of functions we can represent. Let me show you three important kernels one by one. First, let's look at the RBF kernel, also called the squared exponential kernel, which gives us beautiful smooth functions that vary gradually with sharp changes, where points that are close together are highly correlated, 
while points that are far apart have almost no influence on each other. The formula is k of x and x prime equals sigma squared times e to the negative absolute value of x minus x prime squared divided by 2 times i squared. This kernel works perfectly when you expect your underlying function to be smooth and continuous. Now, let's look at the periodic kernel. This one produces interesting cyclical patterns where all functions repeat with the same frequency. They are perfect for capturing seasonal effects or any data with regular oscillations. The formula is k of x and x prime equals sigma squared times c to the negative 2 times sine squared of pi times the absolute values of x minus x prime divided by p all divided by l squared. You will want this kernel whenever your data shows cyclical behavior. Finally, we have the linear kernel, and as you can see, this simple kernel gives us straight lines with varying slopes and intercepts that extend infinitely in both directions. The formula is k of x and x prime equals sigma b squared plus sigma squared times x minus c times x prime minus c. This kernel is ideal when you suspect your data follows a linear trend or when you want to capture global trends in combination with other kernels. The really interesting thing about kernels is that we can combine them to create complex patterns. Let me show you how. For instance, let's take functions from the periodic kernel where they oscillate with a regular pattern and functions from the linear kernel which generate straight lines with different slopes. Now, watch what happens when we add them together. The formula simply becomes k of x and x prime equals k periodic of x and x prime plus k linear of x and x prime. And this addition creates functions that have a linear trend with periodic fluctuations riding on top. And look at these samples. They are oscillating but also trending upward and downward. This combination perfectly captures phenomena like a steadily growing economy with seasonal fluctuations. We can also multiply kernels together, and by using the previous example, the formula is k of x and x prime equals k periodic of x and x prime times k linear of x and x prime. Multiplication creates these very interesting functions where the amplitude of the oscillations grows as we move away from the center which could model situations where periodic effects become more pronounced under extreme conditions. Now, let's put all this together with a practical example. Imagine we have some noisy data that follow an unknown pattern. I'll plot the true function in yellow, but in real life we wouldn't know this. All we'd have are the scattered red data points. Now, let's try to fit different Gaussian processes to this data. First, with the RBF kernel. The result is not bad, but it misses the main pattern, which is the oscillations. Let's try with the periodic kernel. It captures the periodicity within our data, but doesn't capture the linear pattern. So what about combining a periodic kernel with a linear kernel? Well, look at that. Our combined kernel captures the underlying pattern beautifully, with reasonable uncertainty estimates everywhere. To wrap things up, Gaussian processes are an incredibly flexible framework for modeling functions with uncertainty. They give us distributions over functions, not just point estimates, and they naturally provide uncertainty quantification which is very effective for limited data. And by combining this algorithm with kernels, we can capture more complex patterns in our data. So the next time you are facing a regression problem with limited data or need explicitly uncertainty estimates, you should think about Gaussian processes. And that's basically it. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this explanation. Share your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe to be up to date with the content I create on this channel. See you next time. Bye bye.